As we turn to the Word of God, I invite you to stand for the reading of the Word. Even in your homes, I invite you to stand. From time to time, God gives us a message that allows us to connect the foreknowledge of the old with the revelation of the new. So this morning, I want to draw your attention to two verses in the Old Testament, Psalm 62. We're going to look at verses 5 and 6, and then we're going to travel to the New Testament book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 13. Again, we will begin with Psalm 62, verses 5 and 6, and then we will read Romans 15, 13. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. And it reads, Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 62 tells us that our hope comes from God alone and that we can declare on today, I will not be shaken. Romans 15 tells us that the God we serve is a God of hope and that we can abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to preach this morning on the subject, unshakable hope, unshakable hope. Uh, in a time where there seems to be so much uncertainty, so much instability, so much chaos in a world where absolutes are scarce. The Word of God reminds us that the one thing that is certain, stable, and unshakable is God. The Word of God says, find rest. In God, we can find rest from the cares of this world. Some of us have found out since we met Jesus that, yes, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Find rest, my brothers and sisters, uh, not just for our physical body, but rest for our soul, rest for our mind. I know you're tired. You're tired of the pandemic, the isolation, the mass the social distancing, the anxiety, tired of trying to hold it all together. But be encouraged this morning because there is rest in God. We can rest our thoughts on the truth that God is God alone and that he is God all by himself and that besides him, there is no other. We can rest our thoughts on the truth that God is always working, always alert, always moving, and knows every beginning and every end. Glory to God. God is never absent. God is never late. He does not sleep nor slumber. What a mighty God we serve, who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What a mighty God we serve, who is omniscient, all-knowing. He's omnipotent, all-powerful. He's omnipresent, ever-present, here, there, and everywhere, all at the same time. We hope because God is all that. You ought to let somebody know that the God I serve is all that. Yes, he is. He is God. He's God in the good times. In the bad times, he's still God. Beloved, this is why we, we must not allow any present trouble 
to cause us to forget the God we serve. The Bible says he is my rock and my salvation. God is the foundation that never changes. It is on Christ the solid rock I stand because all other ground is sinking sand. This saints is no time to give up. As it is written, there is no present suffering that is even worth comparing to the glory that God will reveal in us. Yes, you see, to have an unshakable hope does not mean that you will not face trouble, nor does it mean that you will not feel the emotions of troublesome situations, but to, to have an unshakable hope, it means that right in the midst of it, you decide to place your hope and trust in God. We have the power to make a decision to either allow the circumstances of life to determine our hope, or to believe the promises of God. I don't know about you, but I have decided to believe the promises of God because the truth of God will always outlive the current facts of our lives. I said the truth of God will always outlive the current facts of your life. I'm not sure if you hear me. See, yes, it is a fact that there is sickness in my body. But the truth is that God is my Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Oh yes, it's a fact that sometimes money may look a little funny. But the truth of the matter is that God is my Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Oh yes, it's a fact that grief is real. But the truth is that God is my Jehovah Shalom. He is my peace. Yes, it's a fact that the battle against the enemy is real. But the truth is that God is my Jehovah Nisi. He's my victory. You see, some from old days have called him El Shaddai, the Almighty, El Ohim, God alone. But I have to tell you that I've learned, Pastor Jamie, that there is one name that rises above every name and that something happens when I call on the name of Jesus. I've learned that at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. I feel like preaching. I've learned that at the name of Jesus, demons tremble and darkness must cease. That at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, cancer will dry up. Tumors will shrink. My God, COVID even must flee. Hearts are regulated at the name of Jesus. Jesus, he is the source of my hope. He is my rock and my refuge, my fortress, my strong tower. It is Jesus. I'm not worshiping the universe. The stars, the moon, any other creation, when I have an opportunity to worship the creator, the one who hung the moon in the sky, the one who put the twinkle in the stars, the one who set the sun in the sky to shine light on the world and then decided to send his son to be light to the world. It's not Buddha. It's not Mohammed. <laughs> it is Jesus who has saved me. It is Jesus who has freed me and redeemed me. Hallelujah. He is the way, the truth, and the life. It is Jesus who makes ways out of no way and who will open doors that no man could. Hallelujah. I believe somebody knows what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about a man named Jesus, the lily of the valley, that bright and morning star. Glory to his name. Our text says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And from our text, God has revealed three things that I'll share with you this morning, and I'll take my seat. 
the first revelation is that hope changes our perspective. We serve a God who knows how to transform our perspective and to align what we see in part with what God sees completely. To see it not from a place of religion, but to see that which is spiritual. God has a way of giving us a radical new perspective. How you, you see it, it will change. This kind of hope is not a cheap hope. It's not for sale. It's not on clearance. It's not up for negotiation. It doesn't fall away with every new doctrine or fly-by-night fad. No, Jesus has already paid the price when he went up on a hill called Calvary. And he died for my sins and your sins, paying a debt he did not owe. Make no mistake about it. Jesus is the reason that we have access to this kind of hope. I recently came across a documentary on the history of the black church, which highlighted a preacher named Jarena Lee, born in 1783. It's not a name that you will find in most history books, but she is black history. She's our history. I'm not sure if you've heard of her, but in one year's time, Jarena Lee walked 2,325 miles, preaching 178 sermons. Clearly, she was an extraordinary woman of God in a time of slavery and great oppression of women. So what caused Jarena Lee to preach the gospel anyhow. Well, I believe that Jarena's lead perspective was full of hope. See, hope will cause you to see God in the midst of the opposition, to see the good in the middle of the bad, to see the opportunity in the struggle, and to see the victory in what seems like defeat you will begin to see closed doors as new beginnings, to see setbacks as setups, and you will see their rejection as God's protection from dangers unseen. <laughs> Anybody in the house grateful for the prayer that God responded to with no or not yet? Ah, uh, I'm talking about the thing you thought you were ready for, but God knew that you weren't. Come on, somebody. See, God's answer is based on his love for us. Uh-huh. And hope, hope allows us to trust God's answer as the best answer, <laughs> even when it doesn't match our preferences or timetable that we set for ourselves. It, it means that you have an unwavering expectation in God. It's not a wish. It's not a fairy tale or a genie in a box. Hope is girded in faith. For we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See, faith says, I believe God. Hope says, I expect God. See, the word hope is translated from the Hebrew word tikva in the original Hebrew language. It, it didn't mean a wish. We've watered down the true meaning of this word. No, the Hebrew word for hope, it meant having a confident expectation in God. I expect God to move. I expect God to heal. I expect God to pour out a blessing that I do not have room enough to receive. Hope, yes, it, it changes our perspective. Let's go a little further. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing. The second revelation is that hope makes room for peace. Somebody say peace. There is peace 
in believing. This peace, it is a promise of God if, if, if we believe. There is something significant to be said about those who believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everyone who's talking about Jesus doesn't believe Jesus. <laughs> Some people are just interested in photo ops and the appearance of believing. Mm -hmm. But when trouble shows up, you need more than the appearance of believing. You need a firm foundation. You need an anchor, something to hold on to. And that anchor is God. Hebrews 6.19 declares this hope we have is an anchor of the soul. Or oh, as the songwriter says, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. For those of us who actually believe this word, we have a peace in believing. And our belief is not something that can be intellectualized because our explanations of God will always be incomplete. And this is why atheists are, are baffled by those of us who believe. But when you experience God for yourself, no explanation is needed. If you have ever felt just a touch from Jesus, no explanation is needed. If he's ever picked you up from a low place, no explanation is needed. If he's ever excelled you beyond your qualifications on paper, mm -hmm, no explanation is needed. If he's ever kept you, delivered you, as a matter of fact, if he woke you up this morning, no explanation is needed. You ought to say, thank you, Lord, for your hand on my life. You see, what we believe matters. Romans 10, 9 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. John 3, 16 tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes, believes in him, shall not perish, but have eternal life. Someone this morning may be wondering, well, preacher, how, how can we experience peace in the midst of all of the breaking news and the uncertainty and the calamity and the deaths and the grief and this hope and peace from God that I speak of? It's not dependent upon circumstances. This peace that I'm speaking of, as an old songwriter said, the world didn't give it to me, so therefore the world can't take it away. <laughs> Hear the good news, church. We serve a God that changes our perspective. He makes room for peace. And finally, this revelation is that, the third revelation is that hope is not passive. <laughs> it requires action. God wants us to abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do something. The Holy Spirit is not stagnant, but it empowers us to walk and to take steps into the future that God has for us. Please hear this. Hope does not mean that we sit on the sidelines of life without participating and putting forth our best effort. No, hope fosters action. Because while I'm hoping, I'm praying. And while I'm hoping, I'm fasting. And while I'm hoping, I'm walking in obedience. While I'm hoping, I'm preparing and I'm studying. And while I'm hoping, I'm working to the glory of God. While I'm hoping, I'm building my confidence. I'm growing in favor. So when the blessing shows up, I'm ready to walk in it by the 
the power of the Holy Spirit. So when the door opens, I recognize it as God's plan. So when the change comes, I'm in place to receive it. So when the miracle happens, I actually believe it. Don't underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to close with this. An old saint shared something with me many years ago that I will never forget. You know, sometimes God places an angel unaware in our midst just to speak a word of hope. This was one of those times. As I sat on the back pew in this very sanctuary right here at Grove with my three sons, I was a single mother at the time, and my three boys, they were just young boys at the time. This wise old saint, she looked at me, and without me saying anything, <laughs> she discerned, she discerned my inner turmoil. And she said to me that you have the answer, but you have to believe that God is the answer. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I don't know who that's for this morning, but you have the answer. But you have to believe that God is the answer because when you believe God, you will hold on to hope. You will hold on to peace. You will hold on with faith. You will hold on believing the promises of God. You will hold on and see what the end will be. You will hold on until your change comes. You will hold on until your strength is renewed. Because the Bible says that those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. <laughs> they will mount up with wings like eagles and they will run and not be weary. They will walk in that faint. I still believe the promises of God. I still believe weeping may endure for the night and joy will come in the morning. I still believe greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I still still believe no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I still believe the last shall be first and the first shall be last. I still believe nothing is impossible with God. So church, keep on hoping. Keep on trusting. Keep on believing. Keep on walking. Keep on to the glory of God by the power of his Holy Spirit. God's been good, church. He's been good. If you know he's been good, give him some praise this morning. Right where you are, in your home, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your car, give him some glory this morning. He's worthy, church, not because of what he's done, but because of who he is. Hallelujah. Will you believe God this morning? That's my question for you. Will you believe God this morning? Will you believe God this morning? Unshakable hope. God says it's yours. Grab hold of it. Don't let go. Because God will not let go of you. Thank you for joining and watching with us today. If this message has impacted your life in any way, we need for you to do a few things. First, please join us every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. on Facebook or YouTube. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Secondly, share this message with your friends, family, co-workers. And lastly, pray about how you could sow a seed into this ministry. That way that we could share this message globally across the world. Your best days are ahead of you. We love you and we miss you being here. Don't forget, you are a walking, talking, breathing, living miracle.